and serene. That's the story outside with some snow falling late last night. But that's not going to be the case inside the rack today as the loudness, the volume, and the excitement building for this Garden State Hardwood Classic. BTN is on hand at the rack in Piscataway as 15th ranked Seton Hall is in town to take on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Hi, everybody. Alongside John Crispin, I'm Kevin Kugler. Pretty good energy, pretty good excitement in here for what should be a really entertaining game. Look, they just played a hype video, and if it doesn't get you hype for this rivalry, then something's wrong with you. Now, the thing was, it was all Rutgers' success in that hype video. Going to be a lot more difficult against 15th-ranked Seton Hall today. Yeah, it's a big challenge for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights at home as we take a look at the starting lineups. And for this Rutgers team, Geo Baker, the freshman, has been turning some heads in the early stages of the season. Yeah, look, Geo Baker, I've said it earlier this season, I think he's the future of this program. He can play a, a number of different positions, but I think with the ball in his hands, that's when he's best. Seton Hall, number 15 in the nation. And when you look at Seton Hall, you look at a variety of places. Ismail Shinogo is a guy that you don't necessarily talk about a lot, but boy, is he a good defender. Well, those are the guys you got to worry the most about. I mean, you've got guards that can just get up and down the floor and go, and when you overhelp, guys like Sonogo end up with easy dunks and layups. Kevin Willard in his eighth season as the head coach at Seton Hall may have the best Seton Hall team since, what, 1993, yeah, perhaps? I'll say, I'll say this is a next-level Seton Hall team because of the way they can beat you. They got size, but they also have great guard play. And Steve Peichel in his second season as Rutgers head coach. We got the chance to spend a lot of time oh, with man. Coach Peichel earlier today. He is, his enthusiasm is infectious. Well, it's, and it's uh, sincere enthusiasm, too. He understands what it takes to, to bring this program back, and he's doing this step by step. I think you're seeing the size of, the, of their improvement. And we're underway here in Piscataway. Geo Baker will work it up. This is where I think this Rutgers team is certainly at their best with Geo Baker with the ball out and Corey Sanders to play off the ball. Just be in attack mode. Rutgers expect him to be patient on offense today as Chom floats that one up. It won't go. Rebound Angel Delgado. And boy, does he rebound the basketball, averaging 10.7 rebounds a game in his career. Yeah, I mean, you're going to say that a lot today, Kevin. Man. Angel Delgado with the rebound. And you're not going to get a lot of second chance opportunities. And for Rutgers, you may not want to send too many to the offensive glass because of the way these guys can get out and run. Tough catch underneath for Sonogo. Tough shot for Sonogo as well. And the rebound tipped by Mamadou Ducor. Both of these teams, excellent rebounding teams. Going to be a big key to this game today. Uh, rebounding starts with position. And they're two very well-coached teams. And that's why you have guys in constant position to rebound the basketball. Ducor trying to move Delgado underneath. Tough shot. Can't get that to go. And there's the rebound to Desi Rodriguez. Well, Steve Peichel said that. Right? We want to attack the shot blocker. We want to attack Delgado. Make him defend. And that's not just outside around the perimeter. It's also in the post. Delgado with the hook. That falls. And Seton Hall on the board first. Delgado. Can't really stop that. He can't. Once he gets the catch there, you're beat. Been the MVP the last two times these teams have met. Trying to go 4 0 in his career against Rutgers, and it means an awful lot to Angel Delgado. Chom trying to find some room in some trouble. There's a foul. Sonogo and Powell both in the area, and that'll go on Sonogo. So far, the defense of Seton Hall just not allowing anything in terms of turning the quarter, attacking the paint. They seem to be the best defenses. You may not stop every single action that Rutgers wants in, their, in terms of their offense, but if you take away a dribble drive, you're going to make it uncomfortable. When you hear a lot about Seton Hall's offense, their defense is underrated. When compared to the talk that the offense provides at 82 points per game, I spin inside and finish for Deshaun Freeman. <laughs> and the flex. Oh, I mean, look, there's a little something here to this rivalry. I, I actually like it. You know, I'm a Jersey guy, I'm a South Jersey guy, so maybe I don't count in this one, but <laughs> I understand what the bride here is. Sonogo got the open look for three, left that one short, crash in the glass, and putting it back up and in is Kadeem Carrington. And that's what you can't allow. Uh, you cannot allow that if you're Rutgers, and that's going to be on the guards. That, that's not just the bigs who don't get a rebound. That's guards who have to find their man and keep them off. I, that happens a lot in scramble situations. You, you, you lose your man, it's a dribble drive, you're trailing the play, and then everybody's left to scramble. If you don't communicate well, you have to give up wide open opportunities on offensive rebounds. And all turned over. Carrington picks up the loose ball, driving all the way to the rim. That one won't fall, but the foul.
foul going on Mamadou Dukor. Yeah, he flies. He, he does. He, he just looks to fly. I think Carrington is just a guy who, when he gets the ball, and I don't care whether it's the half court or full court, he's looking to score. And there's nothing wrong with being a score first, first point guard. I think that's kind of the, the new thing for guards today. Most point guards, if you can't score, you got problems. I know you watched a lot of Seton Hall get ready for this game. How do you feel like Carrington's done transitioning over to the point guard spot? Uh, you know, he's still a score first, score first, excuse me, point guard. And again, as I said, nothing wrong with that. I don't think you move him to the point guard to be a distributor. You move him to the point guard to make plays as a scoring point guard. And that's what a good coach does. They, they don't maximize the potential of what he might be in this position. They maximize the potential of his own skill set. Rare miss for Carrington at the line. Just his fifth miss over the last four games. And he gets to the line a lot. 28, now 29 attempts in the last four games. Now, now the key for a guy like Harrington is having players around and give space. And that's why I love Miles Powell. I want to talk about Miles Powell because I know he's going to do a few things that are going to make us talk about him. But his patience as a two-guard shooting guard around the perimeter, spacing the floor out, his patience waiting for opportunities is what creates space and opportunities for a guy like Harrington. Get a little talking going. Everybody applauding everybody. There was a conversation between Deshaun Freeman and Ishmael Sanogo after that last play. I just hope they don't take one out of the NBA's playbook where everyone now acts like they're going to fight or something, but they really aren't. They really are. I hope not. Like, just stop it. There's Corey Sanders. See if he can get it going. The floater for Sanders rolls home. And those are shots he's got to take and make. Those are the opportunities that Steve Michael's trying to get him to understand. That's a good shot. Getting into the paint, little floater up on the rim. There's Miles Powell at 21 against Rhode Island. That's his high. Great distribution to Sonogo on the baseline. You, Miles Powell might be the real point guard of this team. I mean, just his patience and his poise, but he's also the best three-point shooter. So you have to play him off the wing, not only because of what he does in terms of drawing defense. This is a threat. You know, Baker getting clear. Got a good look. That one won't go. The rebound pulled down by Carrington. Starts it the other way to Powell. Powell with a three in transition. Man, uh, I'd say on, on cue. You look at Miles Powell, and when he showed up at Seton Hall last year, he weighed 240 pounds. I got him in shape, and... So you're telling me I have a chance? You got a shot. There is a shot. <laughs> nice dish from Geo Baker to Deshaun Freeman, and that's what has everybody excited about the freshman Geo Baker. Look, Geo Baker is a playmaker, but, but he's also a really versatile player, which means that if you brought in a point guard next year, and you guy, God, this guy's a great point guard, you can play Geo Baker at the two or three. He's still going to make those same plays, though. So versatile and plays with a little bit of angst as well. No other Big Ten team recruited Geo Baker. Hey, and that's kind of part of it. That's what Steve Peichel wants. Steve Peichel wants guys. So you see a knockdown three from Desi Rodriguez. Steve Peichel wants guys to come in with a chip on their shoulder. Uh, th this is a program that needs to play with their backs against the wall. They need to play as if they've got something to prove. Because they do. Rutgers trying to prove something here. Rutgers down seven in a quick burst. Here's Baker from the elbow. Can't connect on that one. Geo Baker 0 for 2 to start this game. Carrington in transition. Pulls up for the three. It's guys on the rim. And Baker the rebound and a foul on Miles Powell. That'll be his first. Second team foul on Seton Hall and a timeout. And Miles Powell picks up the foul, but he really got things going. It's playmaking, drawing defense, can't overhelp. He's going to find teammates. And then in transition, this ain't an easy shot. But when they fall, man, that's tough to stop. Rutgers down seven as we welcome you back to the rack. But Geo Baker, the freshman out of New Hampshire, making a terrific assist a moment ago to try to help Rutgers get back into this. He does this a lot. Well, he does this a lot, and it gives you a lot of options if you're Steve Michael. With Corey Sanders being better off the ball and still allowing him to tack, you got a guy in Geo Baker who you can put in ball screen situations, and he makes good decisions. I mean, not only is that a nice-looking move, it's a good decision. He draws the defense in because of his ability to finish around the rim, and it's an easy dump down for a teammate. Same thing, in transition, early ball screen, and he's turning and attacking. I mean, you look at the vision, a look away pass, easy layup, and again, it gives you a guy that you're able to play some of your other key players, guys like Mike Williams, guys like Corey Sanders, off the ball ball. Seton Hall, though, five for nine from the floor to start, two for four from three, and they're out-rebounding Rutgers six to two. Yeah, and that's... That's a challenge. That is a challenge. I mean, keeping these guys off the off the glass is not just about boxing out. It's about being in position, not overhelping. When you overhelp, you put yourself in a bad spot when it comes to rebound. Rutgers leading the nation in rebounding and in offensive rebounding this year. 
There's Sanders with 10 on the shot clock. Baker going to have to make something happen with five to shoot. Baker on the drive all the way to the rim. Rebound Delgado. I was surprised how open he was. Harrington quick attack. Desi Rodriguez the three. It's not going to go. Rebound tipped around right into the hands of Michael Enzi off the bench. Offensive rebound for Miles Kale, and it's out of bounds to Seton Hall. Well, the, first, the first offensive rebound was just unfortunate. Uh, that's simply what it was. You had four Rutgers guys there to corral the ball. The second one was the problem. I mean, here, this is just a fluke play. It's this one where you got guys standing around, and that's just too easy. Carrington. 12 points per game this year. Splits two defenders all the way inside of the floater for Carrington. He's got five. That's just tough. And, I mean, having that at the point guard position, I don't care whether he's making more passes than he is shots or not. I mean, him, that's a nice shot by Corey Sanders. But him being able to score like that changes how you defend this entire team, not just Kadeem Carrington. Jack Dorson now on the floor working against Delgado. Fade away from Delgado. Tough shot and the rebound pulled down by Deshaun Freeman. Boxed out beautifully. That's the possession you want. That, that's the possession. If you're going to send tapes around about a good possession, that was one of the good ones. Freeman left all alone. Fires the three and an offensive rebound by Mike Williams. Sanders the step in for two. And Corey Sanders, if he heats up, Rutgers gets right back in this game quick. I'd say Corey Sanders, when he heats up, he's dangerous. But what he, did, <laughs> what he did right there was classic. I mean, get the crowd hyped up, and Kadeem Carrington just drives right by him. That was actually hilarious, for me at least. Probably not so much for him. I mean, you love the play you make on one end. You get the crowd hyped, and you're like, oh, I forgot. This guy's coming at me. Williams around the screen from Dorson. The three won't go. Delgado the rebound for Delgado. That's already four boards. Rodriguez on the attack, collides, and a foul is going to be called on Issa Chong. That's where you got to stop these ball handlers early because they are constantly looking to attack. And this is what we talk about. Here's the shot. Yeah, come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, my bad. <laughs> That's classic. Here it is. Oh, man, let's go. Smack the floor. Why don't you? Know? <laughs> Whoops. Oh, man. You can, look. I don't blame him. You, you make a couple shots. You want to get this crowd back into the game. I would have been doing way worse than that. Reminds me of a game we had on BTN a couple of years ago. Ohio State and Nebraska had to pound yeah, the floor. Pound the floor. The Nebraska guy went right by him <laughs> as he pounded the floor. Here's Sanders trying to get that one back. Throws it over to Williams. I mean, you also don't think this guy's going to come at me full head of speed and just go downhill. Well, that's what they do. Sanders jumped a little strong that time. Good battle for the rebound, and it's Omaruyi who's able to pull it in. Nice work by Eugene Omaruyi. Gets a nice round of applause from the Rutgers fans. I think they were cheering for our camera guy. He took a spill. I'm pretty sure they were cheering for Omaruyi. <laughs> Agree to disagree. <laughs> Sanders to two four. That won't go. And the rebound ripped down by Kale. Boy, Seton Hall doing the job on the glass right now, doubling up Rutgers 12 to 6. One of the big statistical areas you look at with these two teams' excellent rebounding teams. That's it. It's a good rebounding Rutgers team. But Seton Hall just puts you in bad situations. That's what happens when you have a great balanced attack. All the way to the rim. There's Miles Powell. What you were talking about earlier, he can hurt you in so many ways. He really can. I mean, he uses his body well, he, he uses hesitation, dribbles well, and there's always the threat of the jump shot. Sanders the lob underneath to Ducor. Ducor is fouled. And Mamadou Ducor will get his chance at the free throw line after the foul underneath against Michael Enzi. Timeout in Piscataway. The home team, a little work to do midway through this first half. That's what they're playing for today, the trophy in the Garden State Hardwood Classic. 27 miles separate these two campuses, and that trophy you're looking at is made from recycled Asbury Park boardwalk planks. They were damaged and reclaimed after Superstorm Sandy a few years ago and shaped into that trophy, which has been won by Seton Hall ever since the trophy came into play. Yeah, yeah word is, word, word out there is, is that SID here at Rutgers, Kevin Lawrence, he, he actually had this made down in Cumberland County, New Jersey, which is in my neck of the woods, a little deeper down in South Jersey. Uh, an art student from Philadelphia actually crafted this thing. He was living in an airstream down on a farm in Cumberland County, and here it is. It's, it's making its way around, but he said he wants it back. 
So it's like a kid off to school and then never coming home. They never return. Sandra Mamukelashvili with the rebound off the second free throw miss. An eight point game and a little pressure applied by Rutgers. Going to slow off this Seton Hall attack. Desi Rodriguez. Three points to start this one off. Seton Hall shooting 47% from the floor. Rutgers 35% as Powell gets open in the corner for three. And Miles Powell's got eight first half points. Yeah, you're going to have to take that away. I mean, bottom line, you can't leave him. And that's something Steve Pichel talked about. He said, hey, we're not going to help off of him. Oh, nice hands in there by Aaron Gordon to push ahead to Powell. Powell driving to the basket. All popped out of his hands. It'll go to Rutgers. Good defense in the transition game by Rutgers. He just had nowhere to go. He just got stuck in a bad situation up in the air. But I, I tell you, pal, whether it's in transition, spotting up in the three, I mean, he's going to be a tough one to cover. He just lost it. Mike Williams and Mamadou Ducor were there. The ball just rolls around. You cannot leave him. That's a challenge because for so long you're taught, you know, help side, ball side, beat two passes away. You've got to be in help position. No, not when you're covering a score like, like pal. Geo Baker. The kick out to Candido Saw and Saw with a deep two. That's great work. I mean, really, that's that's high level basketball in a two man game, and Saw knocking down that shot. That's a game changer. Saw only averaging under two points a game. Oh, Just his 15th attempt of the year. There you go. Knock a few more of them down. You're going to be playing. Rodriguez around the screen. The three a little bit long, and there's Saw who tips the rebound to Geo Baker. Rutgers got the stop. Now can they cash in on the offensive end? Omorui working against Enzi. Shot won't go, but a foul is going to be called. Michael Enzi trying to defend underneath. Couldn't get it done. That's number two on Enzi. Omorui could, could be a tough matchup. I mean, he's a big, strong body. He's really a three, could play the four. But his ability to put the ball down on the, on the, on the floor and just go get something at the rim, that's tough to challenge. Gene Omorui, the sophomore from Ontario. Corey Sanders said nobody worked harder this past summer than he did to improve his game. Free throw won't go down for him. One more to come. Coming up on BTN, the full slate of men's college basketball continues. We've got Iowa, Ohio State, Illinois all in action and all still to come right here on BTN, streaming live on BTN. And to go here we Fox go. Sports go. Here it goes. And, yep. Uh, look, uh, they... Uh, Some John. The officials missed a couple things here. I, I mean... Angel Delgado walked in on the floor and gave a little shove to Sa, and they let that go. I don't know if they saw it or not, but of course that escalated. That's what I'm talking about. Delgado comes in on the floor. There's a little bump there. There's, there's a shove. The shove yep. There's then another, another one with uh, Omoruyi. Then they're right now they're saying, "Hey, what are you guys doing for the holidays?" You guys gonna get some time at home? Nope. Double technical. Double technicals have been. This is look. I'm not surprised. In that hype video that they showed here, there was much worse than that. This guy's halfway in the stands. I mean, this thing. There's been this some is a serious weird rivalry. stuff that has happened in this rivalry over the years, from technical fouls to ejections to yeah. guys who should have been ejected to headbutts. I mean, it, there's been a little bit of everything in this series. <laughs> <laughs> this is I mean, I don't know. I, it doesn't look that bad. I don't even think Delgado did anything that bad. Double technical is basically saying, hey, we're going to clean it up. Omoruyi gets the technical on the Rutgers side. The, the funny thing is, if this happens against anybody else, if guys bump into one another, it's like, oh, my bad. Not, not seating all Rutgers. No. Here it's a capital offense. <laughs> Everybody gets a little bit excited. Well, now I want to see how these teams both respond. I, I mean, there are some teams that can't handle when the game gets emotional. Free throws missed. Delgado the rebound. And to me, this is an important stop for Rutgers. Back in zone, you've got to force a tough shot. You've got to get a rebound. Sometimes rebounding against the zone or in the zone defensively is a challenge because you're not set on a man. You're in a position. You've got to go find somebody if a shot goes up. Rodriguez was the pirate who got the technical foul. Finds Carrington for the three with the shot clock winding down. A foul underneath battling for the board and it's going 
the other way. Nope, it will be on Candido Saw, so it will stay on this end. On that shot, if there's no foul, Kadeem Carrington gets that rebound back. I mean, if you're Mike Williams, you got to make sure you block out, take your man out of the play, or stay in the play until you secure the rebound. So Saw with his first fourth team foul. Carrington to trigger. Can you blame him on that foul? I mean, you're, you're covering Angel Delgado. You're trying to take him off, off the floor. And look like Miles Powell just stepped out of bounds. If you're trying to take Angel Delgado out of the game on that, on that side of the floor, keeping him off the glass, all you can do is pass block. You're a football guy. You know that. Or hold. Holding. As they do every play. Yes. Right? You know, they could call holding every play. That's what you hear analysts say all the time. A little bobble underneath. Freeman had good position, just couldn't quite pull in the pass. Well, it was a tough angle. Really a tough angle. It was the right pass, good find, good setup by Geo Baker. But you've got to either put a lot of English on it. I mean, here he's going to try to spin that one in. Just not enough spin on that or get a better angle. That's a great play, though. That's a set call right there. Looks like Freeman started to move before he had fully secured that ball as well. And off it went. So Seton all gets it back. Turnover. Number one for Rutgers. Been a clean game from that standpoint. Neither team yeah. with more than one turnover. And they happen on consecutive plays. Well, I don't think either team is going to want to overpressure. I think there's too many playmakers on the floor to overpressure. Rodriguez baseline finds himself at the rim and finishes. He's got five. That's kind of what I'm what I'm talking about. No, that's not what you want. Second straight turnover for Rutgers. If you put too much pressure around the perimeter, you have so many players for Seton Hall who are just going to drive by it and create plays. And they can do it for themselves. As you see, Desi Rodriguez just goes to the basket, elevates over top of everybody else, and finishes. Rodriguez working around the Delgado screen. That ball off one of the Rutgers players in that mix, and it trickles out of bounds. I know Villanova is the cream of the crop right now in the Big East, but boy, this Seton Hall team is going to make some noise in that conference this year. I think they will. I, I think that's a that's a tough one to call right there, Villanova, Seton Hall. When, when you look at both teams, they're very well balanced. But I think the size actually goes to Seton Hall. There are plenty of guards that can handle the pressure. You see Carrington being able to just create shots for himself. They have the guards to handle the pressure of Villanova. It's just can you win the battle down low? Team 1 2 in the preseason prediction of the Big East as Freeman launches from deep. That's not going to go. One arm rebound from Angel Delgado. Strong start for Delgado on the glass. He's got six rebounds already. Powell trying to shake Baker. Powell again. Nice dish underneath to Ishmael Sonogo. I mean, that is just tough to cover. He had to cover. Geo Baker had to cover Miles Powell off of two ball screens. And, and if you trail the play at all, you are going to get beat. This is a high-level Seton Hall basketball team. 26-13, the 15th-ranked Pirates of Seton Hall on top with 8-15 remaining first half. Kevin Kugler alongside John Crispin. Mike Williams on playing this game, he said it's the intensity. Whether it's at the Prudential Center or the Rack, it's always packed. Everybody wants to see who's best in New Jersey. We've seen some of that intensity early, and it goes on both sides in this one. Angel Delgado specifically, this was before last year, when he said they could be number one in the country, we're still going to beat them. That's how I feel. That's how I'm always going to feel if I stay another year here, and he did. I'm going to still beat them too. No, oh, he said three years in a row he wants to make it four. And I mean, it, you say something like that because of the importance of this rivalry. And there's bragging rights. There's something about being the big brother and maintaining your status as big brother. And it has been, you've seen that intensity early. Saw the little shoving match that occurred at the foul line. And I can also tell you, regardless of who wins this game, it, it's always going to change. I mean, Rutgers is on the rise. Seton Hall has had struggles at times, but yeah, this is a top 15 team in the country. See Geo Baker get an open three on a great find. First three for Baker. I still feel like it's a matter of time here. I mean, there's going to be a breakthrough great game for Rutgers, and all of a sudden, they're, they're going to be a real challenge in conference. Yeah, there's a travel. Good post defense working against Delgado forced him to turn it over. That's what you got to do. I mean, this is what Steve Pike will talk to us about. He said, well, we have to put him in position. I mean, Angel Delgado is going to be in position. We got to make sure he works to score. We got to make sure he works on the defensive end. 
The defense is such a stress for Steve Pikelis is after every game, they send out clips yeah. to each of their players on areas they can improve defensively. Here's a couple of things you can do differently. Here's a couple of things you can do better. Here's something I liked from your defensive yeah. effort. I mean, those, those visual teaching tools are so key because you also understand the importance of one possession. If I, if I get this stop, that's one possession where they didn't go down and get an open three in transition. Wow, wow. That's a that's a huge one bad decision on the offensive end. Wild two from Delgado. The rebound to Dorson. Raptors fans enjoyed that. Delgado's been the most talkative of the Pirates about this game. This year saying it's the best game of the year. I always take it personal. Baker trying to heat it up. Offensive rebound for Dorson. Baker on the drive. Baker with a finish. Second chance opportunities, Kevin. I mean, that's what's getting this crowd back into this game. Eight-point basketball game, but they're coming alive. Twelve to shoot for Delgado. Carrington with seven on the shot clock against Dorson. He likes this mismatch. There's Sanders coming in to try to make a play. Rodriguez, one to shoot. Just when you do everything right. Rutgers, great defensive stop. Force a kick out, tough shot. But as I said, there are so many playmakers on this team. So many shot makers as well. Eight for Rodriguez. There's Baker. Freeman. He'll put it on the deck. Free throw line jumper won't go. Dorson battling for the rebound. That wild shot rebounded by Delgado. Now Carrington just gliding to the rim. Carrington count it and the foul. If you allow this man to get in transition, continue to play downhill without just at least stopping, making him change directions, he's just too good. He's got great body control. He handles the contact. He can finish. He keeps his eyes up on the, on the rim. That's why I love scoring point guards. And they completely change the game because while you're trying to take three-point opportunities away from guys like Miles Powell, Desi Rodriguez in transition, he's just going to carve you up in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Baker with his first foul sends Carrington to the line to try to complete the three-point play. Couldn't connect on that one, but still not a bad line to start. Seven points, four yeah. rebounds, three assists, and no turnover. Uh, that's not a bad line at all, uh, especially for a guy who's really a score-first point guard. Turnovers are always the key because you're in attack mode constantly. Sanders in attack mode. Count that one in a foul. Ramu Kelashvili with the personal foul. That'll be his first. You're talking to Steve Pico, he said, we, we've got to put Corey in positions to be the best that he could be. And I think that's one of those positions. You know, you got an open baseline, let him attack, and that's what he does. He just goes right at the body, elevates. Probably one of the best athletes on the floor by far. And completing the three-point play. Where's Sanders? Good start, John. Nine points, four for five shooting. His team down 10, though. Is Seton Hall back to work with Aaron Gordon? Rodriguez with Mike Williams in his face. The shot over won't go. The rebound, Candido Sa. That's a great box out, box out by Candido Sa, especially on the back side. Williams going baseline. And a rebound, Aaron Gordon. And then a whistle and a travel. And give that one to Deshaun Freeman. It was a roadblock that Aaron Gordon couldn't get around. Yeah, he was in position. If you get there late, it's going to be a foul, but he was in position. He's just right there. He just travels. That's right. Good call. Well, Rutgers with a second chance here. A thing for Rutgers too. This feels good. Playing this game at home, that the place is packed. They're loud. They're going to be in this game. If you keep this a, a basketball game, I think a shot here gets this place going again. And Baker, a foul, sixth team foul against the Pirates of Seton Hall. Up, Desi Rodriguez. He got one already. Now Rodriguez was the recipient of one of those double technicals earlier.
that's where experience, you, you have to just remind yourself, I want to be in this game, and I think that's why Miles Powell's coming in. And for Rutgers, I think the chippiness, and I don't like that term too much, but I think the chippiness favors them. <laughs> I mean, it's just this is how this is going to be. But Desi Rodriguez, you got to know, you already got one technically. You can't get into it. Because if you're even saying something that an official picks up. Took a long walk to his neutral quarter after that one. Was it a boxing reference? It was. Every now and then I keep up. It's good. I like that. When I listen. Which is rare. Not a listener. Couple of screens, finds Powell, deep three for Miles Powell, and the rebound to Geo Baker. I say one possession, one good score here, and this Rutgers crowd gets back into it. Baker inside, he's hammered, he'll go to the line. Quick attack by the freshman Geo Baker. Seton Hall collapsing on him defensively in the foul. It's a quick attack and, and a hard converge. I mean, there are four guys closing in. I think that's where shooters are really going to help this program. You have a guy like Geo Baker. I mean, there's four players in the paint there. If you have shooters around the perimeter who are going to keep the defense honest, Geo Baker's the kind of guy who can go up and finish on a big. Maybe not four of them. Feels good after the Amu Kelashvili foul. And Rutgers back within eight. Crowd trying to wake up again. Here's Gordon. Kale in the corner. That three won't go. Sanders skying for the rebound. Now Sanders off the crossover. Baker around the screen. Nice catch by Williams in traffic. Wiggles to the rim. Timeout, Seton Hall. Basketball on BTN is brought to you in part by State Farm. Here to help life go right. Life going right for Rutgers right now. The Scarlet Knights on a 7-0 run back within six. Yeah, 7-0 scoring run. The last couple, couple buckets came with Desi Rodriguez and Kadeem Carrington off the floor. They're back in. I think at this point, you get your starters back into the rhythm and flow of this game if you're Seton Hall. Because right now, as we went to break, you could hear the crowd was back into it. Student section fired up for this early tip. Rutgers back within six. Kadeem Carrington back out on the floor for Seton Hall. As is Angel Delgado. They're looking for him now. One on one against Candido Sa. Carrington has his pocket pick, but a foul. Corey Sanders thought he got the ball. Instead, he picks up his first foul. Corey Sanders initially got beat, but again, just a heady basketball player. Saw an opportunity. Ball in the right hand of Kadeem Carrington. I'm not sure if it was or not. First on Sanders, sixth on Rutgers as a team. Here's Rodriguez running inside, and that's a foul and two shots coming. And Sanders just got lost on that play. I I'm not sure what happened. He's covering the inbounders. Inbounder, Desi Rodriguez. The ball is inbounded, and, and Sanders just stood. I mean, you, you can't get lost in this situation. I I'm not sure what happened there. Could have been a switch if, uh, if I'm mistaken, but... This is where you really got to get locked in. You got to get dialed in, especially with this core group on the floor from Seton Hall. You make a great run, but you got to follow it up. Rodriguez, for all of his strengths, and there are so many of them, he is not a great free throw shooter. 68% on the year of the line. It's amazing how mental that is. I mean, this is a guy who's going to catch a, tra catch a transition three opportunity and, and pull it with a guy right in his face. 68% from the free throw line. It's adequate. I think he's player of the week already once this year. Averaged 26 and a half points in the two wins over Texas Tech yeah. and Louisville. 
State Farm Halftime Report coming up. A lot to talk about from this one, plus a lot to talk about on a busy day in the Big Ten and a busy day on BTN. First of four games today on the network. That's a long day in the studio, putting in work. I think Revs is in there, right? Uh, Revs, is, I think, a cyborg. I'm not sure he ever sleeps. He'll just, he just works nonstop. That's all he does. Robbie Hummel is in there to help him out. But Cyborg. Reps I mean, in the cyborg. I like that man. You put him near sports and he'll he'll say words about sports for hours on end. Delgado, the skip in the corner. Powell open for the three. And Powell hits again. 11 for Powell. Three from downtown. He's the one guy I would say if there's anybody I'm not going to leave throughout the course of this game, it's Miles Powell. And Geo Baker's been on him, but there are times, and that's going to be two. One Powell. You cannot leave. I don't care if you're two, three, four, five, ten passes away, wherever that is on the floor. I wouldn't leave him. I wouldn't allow him to get comfortable. Not, not just get a shot, but even step into the shot. That's a rhythm, shot-ready jumper. And that's going to be high percentage. Frustration after that second foul. Powell sits down with his 11 points. Omaruyi to the line for a one and one. He'll get the bonus. So 2.38 to go. Powell goes down with a 10 point lead in his second foul. See if Rutgers is able to close this gap before halftime. They led by nine at the half in last year's game, did the Scarlet Knights, before Seton Hall came back to win it 72 61. Kind of like the future of this matchup, too. Geo Baker, Miles Powell. Two guys are going to go out go at least for the next two years. Here's Carrington accelerating. Kale in the corner. Now Delgado off the ball fake. And a foul is going to be called. I mean, that was row six, seat seven. That, that, was, <laughs> that was actually deep into the sands. Baker with the foul, though, his second. Oh, just let him keep the souvenir. We've got extra balls, right? No problem spending the athletic budget of Rutgers, do you, on basketballs? Hey, I'm just, I'm here for the fans. Just trying to make sure everybody has a good time. One more for Delgado. So Baker sits they down with two. They gave out a TV a little bit ago. What are you ta They threw a TV box in the stands. So and you want them to give more? They've already given. They're going to give a chance for somebody to win 25 grand, I think. Yeah. That's right. Is that somebody else? No. Okay. One for two for Delgado, Freeman the rebound. They want someone that people will cheer for. I'm loving it. Sure. <laughs> 2 15 to go in the first. Sanders on the attack. The little floater won't go. The tip try won't go. Sanders stays with it and finally gets the two. Those are the plays that you just scratch your head on. And say, I don't even know how that happened, but we were in position to make the play. Rodriguez lost it. Turnover. Long pass ahead to Williams against Delgado. Williams, Delgado with a rejection. Freeman stays with it. Freeman is rejected. Delgado bats it in the air. And Seton Hall going the other way. Carrington a three on one. The lob taken away by Sanders. This is really starting to get into it. I mean, this is just defense, defense. Corey Sanders just putting himself in a good position. That's kind of a 3-0-1. He takes it away. It's a really good defensive play by Corey Sanders. Yeah, it's a missed opportunity on the other end for Rutgers, too. I mean, you get a breakaway, you've got to be able to capitalize and cut further into this lead. Could be a five-point game. Rodriguez with the step back. Not gonna go. Oh, nice rebound underneath by Kale, and that falls. Miles Kale, strong boy. I mean, first is the elevation, but he timed his jump perfectly. He got that thing at the height of his jump as the ball's coming down. Williams, tough two. Freeman with the tip, and pushed back out to Rodriguez. Long pass ahead to Carrington. Carrington speed lead the field. The shot won't go, and the rebound out of bounds to Rutgers. Everybody's on the floor. Everybody's getting after it. I mean, it, it's just been good, clean, intense, fun basketball. I think both teams are, are really getting after it, but it, we talk about teams taking care of the ball, putting themselves in a good position to score. I mean, defense has been there. 
Well, it's been impressive, John. This officiating crew has allowed it to be a physical game without the extracurricular stuff becoming too intense. They haven't yes. taken over the game because there was a little bit of nudging. I think you also trust there's some experienced players on the floor. And you want to let them enjoy this matchup. Corey Sanders gets that to go. Now you got to lock down if you're Rutgers. Six-point basketball, 40 seconds. Kraut's going into getting into it. Rodriguez driving inside, and somehow it falls for Desi Rodriguez. Wow. I mean, that is just to put your head down and go attack. Kevin Willard wants his guys to lock down for one possession. Try to maintain all the momentum going into the half. State Farm halftime report straight ahead. 13 seconds until the break. Baker lost it. Nice pick ahead by Rodriguez. Kale finishing. Oh, my goodness. Miles Kale with the reverse jam. He's got a hurry, and Dorson's half-court heave not going to be close. And it could have been five. It ends up 10 at halftime with Seton Hall up 42-32. These are the intense rivals that we talk about. This was back and forth. I mean, the, the steal here, the dunk, changes the game here. All the momentum, as he said, could have been five. Turns out to be a 10-point basketball game at the half. So Seton Hall takes the 10-point lead into the locker room. A reminder, though, that Rutgers led by nine at half last year, and there was a reversal in fortunes. Anything can happen as we close in the start of the second half. Stay tuned. The State Farm Halftime Report is coming up right after this. Dave Revson and Robbie Hummel are in studios ready to get it going. Seton Hall and Rutgers. Ten-point game at the break in Piscataway. One half away until somebody's walking out of here with the trophy. The Garden State Hardwood Classic right now. Seton Hall with the 10-point lead as we get set to start the second half. Alongside John Crisp and Kevin Kugler back at the rack in Piscataway. Very intense and entertaining first half. It was a great first half. Could have been a five-point basketball game going into the half. Things got a little emotional. Seton Hall pulled away with a 10-point lead. And Seton Hall pulled away because of some terrific play from Miles Powell. Yeah, I think Miles Powell is one of the biggest keys to this team. It's not just what he does in terms of making shots. It's the fact that he spaces the floor, he, he gets himself to open areas and it opens up the floor for his teammates. And on the other hand, Corey Sanders was great offensively. The key for Corey Sanders, I know he can do all this. Can he lock down and get stops and do the thing that his team needs him to do? 47% from the floor for Seton Hall. Five of 14 from three. Good clean basketball from a turnover standpoint, but Seton Hall doing what they do in the paint. That's been a team that has almost doubled up their opponents in the paint this year. Came in outscoring their opponents 408 to 260 in the paint. And I like what we saw in the first half. Little John, it got physical at that time. Miles Powell dials one up. And surprise, Angel Delgado gets a rebound. Yeah, not a surprise. He's the ninth rebound, but a turnover now to Rutgers. So the Scarlet Knights get the stop. Now back up the floor for their first offensive possession of the second half. The physicality and the intensity is there, but if this becomes an emotionally driven game, I think it favors, obviously, the more experienced team in Seton Hall. It's a charm, the entry to Freeman. Nine to shoot for Freeman. Tough shot through the contact of the foul on Rodriguez, his second. I like that, but the key is you've you got to give him space to work. Give him room to work. If you can give Sean Freeman a one-on-one -on -one opportunity in the post, I, I would take those chances. Unless Angel Delgado's coming, then I'd pass it. Good on the first. Sean Freeman. Tough afternoon from the floor so far. Two for eight shooting. He's got five points and six rebounds. Yeah, it's not going to be easy down low, and he's going to have to do most of his work on the defensive end, particularly rebounding the basketball. Eight-point lead for Seton Hall. Delgado the handoff to Powell. Alone in the corner, Rodriguez the three. Halfway down, and look at the rebound by Sinogo. Up top to Carrington, his three is good. And, and those are absolute backbreakers. You work, you force a tough shot, you're in position, but you just let Sonogo run around and get that rebound. It leads to a kick out open three for one of the best shooters on the floor. 
A step in deep two for Issa Chom, and Chom with his first two points. The offensive rebounds are the ones that coaches that look at and go, if we just take that away. Second chance points, if we just take that away, we're there. Delgado, one on one. Carrington lost it. Chom able to keep it alive to Sanders. And there's a foul on Kareem Carrington, his first. Second foul on the Pirates, first on Carrington. Decor will inbound. Decor did a good job in the post covering Angel Delgado. I mean, putting a, that's a lot of weight to be able to handle. Forcing them to kick the ball back out. That's a win down in the post. There's Sanders. 14 first half points for Sanders. Geo Baker wants to get it inside to Freeman. He'll take it himself to the elbow. And here comes Rutgers again, creeping back into this one down seven. Yeah, but that's the shot that it's got to be. You're not going to get anything going to the rim. There's too much, too many defenders down there, but that pull-up jumper for Geo Baker is so key. That's a game changer. It's a guy that can get into the paint. Five points for Geo Baker. Rodriguez. Felt the contact, able to muscle it up and get it to drop. He's got 13. Oh, how much he felt that contact. I mean, it, it seemed like he brushed that contact <laughs> off. And that's not a knock on the uh, slim physique of Issa Chong. Maybe it is. Delgado with the rebound off the before miss. Carrington on the push. Delgado alone for three. The big man. Unable to connect. He's over two this year from behind the arc. Now Sanders. Baker step back three. And he's fouled. Harrington with his second. I think Geo Baker just puts you in a tough spot defensively. You switch out. Dean Carrington's a good defender, but it's not really the guy you want on Geo Baker. He's having to work on the offensive end. You don't want to have to take Geo Baker out of this game. Baker can do that. He can pull jumpers in your face, whether it be from 15 or 20 feet. And he can finish well at the rim. As I said before, this seems to be the future of the program. A guy like Geo Baker, a chip on his shoulder, something to prove. Other people have somehow passed him up. And here he lands with an opportunity to do it on a big stage in the Big Ten. He's got such a smooth handle. And, and they like him yeah. almost equally as a passer and a shooter. Yeah. Well, I mean, the way the game is today, those things go hand in hand. Everybody on the floor at the NBA level is a playmaker. That's just the way the game is today. You have to be able to put the ball on the floor, make a play for yourself or for a teammate. And then you make $50 million a year. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Everybody's doing it. Baker good on all three at the line. Six-point game. I'll get him going again in the rack. So no go inside, and that'll quiet him in the rack. Desi Rodriguez to the rim. There's two things there. There's no ball pressure. It's easy to pick out your pass. And Deshaun Freeman just, just lost him for a second. Baker around the Dorson screen. Tough jumper from the elbow. Delgado with the rebound. And for Delgado, that's 11 rebounds. And a turnover. Powell took his eye. Lost the ball off his leg. That goes back to Rutgers. Well, Gio did it. Gio Baker did a great job gapping on that, giving just enough space to protect himself from that dribble drive. But he's got the length to, to be able to contest that shot from Miles Powell if he goes and pulls it. And sometimes you got to live with a tough shot. If a guy's going to make a tough shot and it was still good defense, it's still good defense. If that makes sense. I'll put it on my list of things to ponder <laughs> later on when I have a moment. Still the defense twice. 15 to shoot Baker. The skip pass to Sanders for the three. Corey Sanders three won't go, so no go with the rebound. Not a bad shot. That's one you can live with. Corey Sanders not the best three-point shooter, but it's still a good look. Entry to Delgado. Working against Dorsey. The hook shot. Well short. Caught in the air ball by Freeman. Dorsey the bigger body post for Rutgers. Backdoor bounce pass to Baker. Couldn't get it to fall. Delgado changed that yeah, shot. He sure did. 
still almost got that thing to go. Rodriguez backing down. And the foul is going to be called. Mike Williams doesn't necessarily agree. That foul is going to stand. Timeout here at Rutgers. They beat the top five team, but tonight they have. That was the last time that Rutgers beat a ranked opponent, January 11, 2015, against Wisconsin. A chance to do it here today with 15th ranked Seton Hall in town. The last time either team, by the way, was ranked in this game came back in 2001. Rutgers won that game 70 to 64. Seton Hall also ranked 15th that year. Some game note material there. Right? I'm telling you, you gotta, you gotta know about rankings. Do your prep. Rankings are important. It kind of shows the status of the program at the moment. Well, and if you beat that ranked team, it can give your program absolutely big lift psychologically, emotionally. I think it's a challenge to be a ranked team. I mean, we saw that from Northwestern earlier this year. Northwestern comes into the season top 25 team because they're feeling great about the NCAA tournament run. They got all their, their you know, four or five starters back. They forget that you really have to go out and perform and continue to earn it. Milson over six now. That beautiful pass from the big in the top. Delgado with a bullet. Sanders almost taken away by Rodriguez. Larui on the drive won't go. Offensive rebound, Dorson. That won't go. Rebound kicked out to Williams. Williams can't get it to go. Another rebound for Omaruyi, and Rutgers will back it out. I love Mike Williams just getting after the glass. Sanders, tough too. That's not going to go, and it's going the other way. And that's the one you can't have. I mean, you work that hard to get a second chance opportunity, and I get it. I understand the mindset of a guy like Corey Sanders. I really do. He's a great athlete. He can make plays. He can create space. So you want to make that big shot for your team. I don't think it's entirely selfish, but it's still not the right shot in that moment. Now Seton Hall with a chance to stretch the lead past 10. By 10 at the break, and there's a turnover. Turnover number eight for the Pirates, fourth in the half. Midway through the first half before either team yeah. had a turnover. Rutgers does not have one in this second half. Marie Rui wanted to get it to Sanders. Good defense by Carrington. Well, tipped away by Rodriguez, 13 to shoot for the Scarlet Knights. Here's Sanders, nine on the shot clock. Working against Sonogo. Sanders now on with Delgado, drives it inside, won't get it to go. Offensive rebound for Saw. Candido Saw with a back out. Here's Sanders again, and a travel. Ishmael Sonogo. Kevin Willard says he's an NBA-level defender. And he was defending at a high level there. Well, you have enough athletes on the floor where if you want to be an NBA-level defender, you can be. Uh, and there he is, just right in position, great length. I think there's a lot of guys on the floor right now. If Corey Sanders wanted to be an NBA-level defender, he could be. Is it a mindset thing? I think it's both. It's mindset and, and teachability. You, you've got to be teachable. You've got to understand how to put yourself in position to be able to make stops. Geo Baker in transition. Omaruyi won't get it to go. There's a blocking foul. Still got to make that shot. All right, that's a shot you've got to make. And if you go up to make that shot and not to get fouled, you, you're going to make the shot. But I go back. It's not just athleticism. It, it's not just being having length and a seven foot five wingspan and being six four. I mean, it, it's about putting yourself in position and understanding the, the kind of the might write a, a basketball IQ when it comes to defense, forcing a guy in a tough spot. On Wednesday, BTN brings you seven full hours of signing day coverage, featuring interviews with coaches and breakdowns of every class. The Big Ten Football and Beyond Signing Day Special. Wednesday, 9 a.m. Eastern, right here on BTN, streaming live on BTN The Go. Only signing day this year in college football means Mike Hall has to work more. Seven hours straight. I wouldn't have a voice. It's a lot of football talk. There is a lot of football talk. About guys that haven't even played yet. How about that? Yeah. First points in over three and a half minutes on that 
free throw. Rutgers hasn't hit a field goal in almost five minutes, yet they're still only down nine. Rodriguez and another turnover. And you gotta credit Issa John there. Uh, same situation as a few plays back where Rodriguez goes to the basket and just kind of displaces Issa John. Tries to do it again. John did get sent back a few feet, but any of us would. Maybe not you, Kevin, you're a brick wall. It is true. It's all the protein. <laughs> Baker starts it up for Rutgers. John on a handoff to Williams. Williams, a little hesitation, gets all the way to the rim, and there's the first field goal in five minutes for Rutgers. That's great action. Uh, it really put Seton Hall in a tough spot, forcing a few switches, turning the quarter, get something at the rim. Rodriguez, nice crossover to get inside. The dump down low, and a foul is called on Candido. Saw Michael Enzi will go to the line. Well, that's just tough work for Easy John. I mean, he's really working. He's fighting over screens. He's, he's, you can see that he's dialed in defensively. But Desi Rodriguez can just put you in a mixer. He's able to find a teammate. And yeah, that's a foul. Michael Enzi at the line. First free throws of the afternoon. First point for Michael Enzi, two-time academic All-Big East player. Been an offensive rebounding specialist throughout his career. Well, under half of his total career rebounds are on the offensive glass. You look at guys like Michael Enzi and Ishmael Sinogo. They're guys who aren't necessarily going to be big scorers, John, but with this lineup, you don't have to be big scorers. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, look, this is a team that spaces the floor pretty well balanced. I think the biggest challenge is what they can do defensively with, without having a big guy in the got over the floor. Looking for Williams, nothing there. Over Rui will drive inside against Enzi. All kinds of traffic. He's in trouble, needs some help. Fadeaway jumper not going to go. Offensive rebound, ball loose. Who's got it? And we'll have a whistle. And Wait, Deshaun Freeman, very unhappy. That's a tie-up, and they'll keep it on this end of the floor with a foul. shoot. Uh, it, there, there's no way around that. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. But Miles Powell comes from behind and just pulls Deshaun Freeman down. And he's just right by that. It's a foul. Key is Rutgers gets the ball back here with an opportunity to make something happen. Got a no shot clock. And hits the three. Five point game. And a foul called on Issa Chong. This crowd is just looking for any reason to erupt. It's been a great crowd. I mean, I think this, this team is. The type of group that you want to come out and support against Seton Hall. Big rivalry game and a top 15 team at that. Over 8,000 going nuts right now. Freeman on the attack and a foul. Steve Peichel wants him to count the bucket. Was it a goaltend? No. Timeout on the floor. Rutgers shooting free throws. 11.44 remaining in this second half. I've been taken. My heart is racing. A hundred miles. Every second I'm with you. Every second I'm with you. This is love, 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 love. Only thing I know is true. This is love that I could fall into. Seton Hall's lead down to 5, 11.44 remaining in the second half with John Crisp and Kevin Kugler back on BTN in Piscataway. And Geo Baker a moment ago with the shot clock winding down. Our Bass Pro Shops in the net. A giant three for Rutgers. It was a big three. It was, it was kind of an unfortunate play that ended up having to happen for Rutgers. You know, what I thought was a foul. The one Sean Sean Freeman, they get the ball out of bounds underneath, and Geo Baker almost felt as if he didn't know how much time was on the clock, but he gets it to go. 
Sean Freeman. On the year, 69% at the line. One more for Freeman, who has seven points and ten rebounds. And that rebounding battle has tightened again, too. Seton Hall's lead now just two on the glass. I think Rutgers have, has done a much better job of winning their individual battle defensively here in the second half. Keeping their man in front, which keeps the rest of the defense dialed in, where they don't have to overhelp to get out of position. Four-point game. Harrington, the handoff to Rodriguez. Step back two from the elbow. And there's another rebound for Freeman. And it's not a bad shot, but it's also good defense. And that's the type of shot that you can live with if that's how they're going to win this basketball game. Almost four minutes without a bucket for Seton Hall. Chom a three. Caught underneath by Mike Williams. Left alone for a three. The tip is there for Omaruyi. His three won't go. Rutgers with the rebound, and Omaruyi starts it up to Baker. For the lead. Rutgers has not led in this game. Well, they've done it on the defensive end. And even rebounding the basketball, they're just locked in. And just executing in every way at this point. Delgado leaning inside, and Delgado a travel. Kevin, this is one of those plays where you thought the three was going to go, but they got something almost even better. You might not have gotten three points, but th that thing just brought this crowd all but into it. Baker ties it up. Baseline won't go. Rebound. Issa Chom. Rutgers on the push, looking for their first lead. Williams underneath Omaruyi. Freeman rejected by Sonogo, and going to be tipped out of bounds. It'll belong to Seton Hall. Now, I think if you're Rutgers at this point, yeah, it's good to push, but you also have to pull it out if there's nothing there. There's defense converging, bodies at the rim. You're not going to get anything easy. Nothing wrong with pulling it out. I mean, Seton Hall starting to play back on their heels a bit, taking some tough shots. And again, Rutgers not overhelping, which means they're putting themselves in position to rebound the basketball on this shot. It's the largest crowd in 15 years at the rack. Over 8,000 in this building. Last time this big a crowd was here, Seton Hall also in the building. Rutgers won that game. Looking for Delgado. Back to Carrington. Carrington. No. Delgado, yes. That's what happens when you get beat around the perimeter. When you get beat around the perimeter, your bigs are forced to come help. And that's the man who ends up scoring. Freeman. Rejected by Sonogo. Delgado grabs a loose ball. Back-to-back -back good plays by Sonogo. Sanders with a pick. And now numbers for Rutgers if they hurry. Freeman stumbling his way to the rim and a foul. Rutgers got fortunate there. Deshaun Freeman almost lost that ball to Desi Rodriguez. Uh, he really just didn't seem to have control of it the whole time. Probably best to give it up. A good steal by Corey Sanders. And Deshaun Freeman just pushing it down the floor. I'm just sure he wasn't sure where to go with it. Third foul on Rodriguez. More for Freeman. Nine minutes exactly to play in this game as Chom checks in for Williams. Back to that last basket. Angel Delgado, the tip jam. The issue is going to be keeping your man in front. If you can keep your man in front, force a tough shot, your bigs are going to be there to clean up the mess. Rutgers is a good rebounding team. And there's Freeman with the board. And Freeman is fouled.
The offensive rebound off the miss. The foul on Delgado. His second, and now more free throws. Yeah, he didn't like it. He didn't like it one bit. Angel Delgado was in position. I, if anything, I think he was backing up. An opportunity here. I, mean, I don't know. I just saw it on the big board. Not much there. Freeman, who's four for seven at the line. It took four free throw attempts, <laughs> but we're tied up again. Omoruyi in, Freeman out. He's done some good work on the glass as Freeman. Nine points, 13 rebounds. Yeah, you saw he was gassed. He was gassed at the free line there, free throw line. Great to make that second one and be able to give himself a break. Kale working it to Carrington. Tie game, 8.48 to go. Here's Delgado against Saab. Re-entry to Delgado with 14 to shoot. Back out it goes. The three up. Won't go. Rebound. Kale able to pull it in. And then a foul. The freshman, Miles Kale, just slipped inside and able to grab that rebound. It's tough. I mean, backside rebounding is going to be hard when, when you have a guard diving from the three-point line. Issa Chom just goes for the ball, not the man. And it's not as if you have to go old school box out with your hands up in the air and, and push him out. You just got to make contact so you can force the defense, force the offensive rebounder away from the ball. Oh, what a three. What a three from Miles Powell. That wasn't an easy shot. That was good defense. Three point lead for Seton Hall. I think he's got to get Geo Baker back involved in the offense here. Here it goes from the elbow. <laughs> to block it is Carrington. Excellent defensive play by Kadeem Carrington. And that's a tough thing, too. When you're not involved in the offense for a few possessions, you end up forcing something. Foul on the drive, the dish. No, that's a foul first. An offensive foul on Seton Hall. Wave it off. Miles Powell with his third foul. But a three-pointer from Miles Powell gives the Pirates the lead with eight minutes to play at Piscataway. Basketball on BTN is brought to you in part by State Farm, here to help life go right. Kevin Kugler, John Crispin, our BTN crew, starting up a busy day on BTN from Piscataway. What a ball game. Ten-point lead at halftime for Seton Hall. Rutgers comes storming back in the second half to tie it. A three moments ago from Miles Powell gives Seton Hall the three-point lead as Rutgers back to work on offense. I mean, the environment here has been terrific. Uh, this, is a, this is a really good place for basketball when the crowd's into it and when the product is good. And right now, the product is good. Not to mention, it, number 15 ranked Seton Hall in the house. Michael looking for that one breakthrough win. Played Michigan State tight. They were in a battle with Florida State. Nito saw the handoff to Sanders with 12 to shoot. Corey Sanders wants to go to work against Carrington. Looking for the screen from Saw. Saw has it taken away. Kale with the anticipation. Here's Carrington. Carrington to the rim. Saw with the rejection, but the follow by Sonogo. Sonogo. New season high, eight points for Ishmael Sonogo. You talk about a team being close. Uh, there are teams that are always on the cusp, on the verge. But you've got to find a way to win those games. And that's the thing, that once you start to learn how to win, you become a winning team. Miles Kale with the foul away from the ball. His first personal foul, the Pirates. Ninth foul on Seton Hall. Four in the second half against Rutgers. So Scarlett Knights will be shooting the rest of the way. One and one. Today at the line. And Delgado, rebound number 18. Of course, 
stoppage here by referee Steve McJunkins to shot clock didn't start. Yeah, the clock did not go. I still think that everything for Rutgers has to start on the defensive end. They seem to get motivated and uplifted with stops and now picking up full court pressure. Pressure all you want, but you got to make sure when you get in the half court, you don't apply too much pressure and give up layups. There, there are too many playmakers on the Seton Hall team. One of them with the ball in his hands right now, Kadeem Carrington's got 10 points, six rebounds, four assists. Sonogo and the jumper good. He's not a big scorer, but he can be a big scorer. Yeah, if you he really is. I mean, you talk about him being an elite level NBA defender. Well, he's going to find ways to get open shots because of the playmakers on the floor. All of a sudden, this is a seven point game again as Sanders tries the three. Long rebound ripped down by Omarugi. The dump down low to Freeman. Freeman can't finish that one, and Seton Hall pulls it away again. Oh, Seton Hall just converges so well down in the paint. And once again, Sonogo, just with that length, closing speed, that's really it. I mean, that's a help side defender coming over to take that away. There's Powell from the elbow. And Powell stretches the lead to nine and a timeout. It's going to be called by Rutgers here. Sanders across the timeline and timeout with 6.01 to go. A veteran team in a tie game. Seton Hall responds. 9-0 run. where Seton Hall on a 9-0 run before a huge crowd, 8,318 on hand here today, the largest crowd since February 23, 2002 at the rack, also against Seton Hall. Yeah, and they've been into it. They, they really have. Rutgers is really making a game out of this. First half, had a chance to be down five, ended up being a 10-point game at the half, but they fought back, starting with the defense. Freeman working against Sonogo. Tough hook, and it goes in. Nice move by Deshaun Freeman to get clear of Sonogo and break the spell. Oh, I like the ISO, but I also like the patience of the rest of the team on the floor. Just stay out. Give your man space to work. Powell, the lob to Sonogo. Trying to throw that back into Kale. A scramble. Delgado trying to finish the scramble on a rejection by Omaruyi. Sanders, the little bobble. Here's Baker for three. And Omaruyi in there for the rebound. Good work by Omaruyi. Sanders in the corner to Mike Williams. Three won't go. Rebound tipped by Delgado into the hands of Sonogo. Yeah, Omaruyi does a lot of good things for your team. It's great activity on the offensive and defensive end. I feel like Delgado's getting tired. Looked like it there, didn't he? Sanders all the way to the rim, and nobody's stopping Corey Sanders, and Rutgers back within five. Powell. The bounce to Delgado. Working in the block against Omaruya. Yeah. Omaruya the rebound. He's just tired. He really is. He's tired. And that's to be expected. Rutgers has size. They've got good depth at, at the big position. Nice hands by Miles Kale to intercept that bounce. So it's a lot of bodies wearing on him. For Rutgers, you've got to take advantage of every opportunity you have, especially after a stop. Freeman trying to get the crowd going here as Seton Hall sets up in the half court. Harrington. Eight foot floater. That's not going to go. Rebound underneath. A whistle and a foul. Omaruyi battling with Delgado down low. This will be a foul on Omaruyi and a timeout at the rack. 3.52 remaining in the second half. Corey Sanders keeping the Scarlet Knights in it. All right, Dave, thanks very much. Another one of those in-state rivalries on BTN. We've got a good one here in the state of Jersey. 63-58, Seton Hall with a five-point lead. Miles Powell 
was the spark early in this one on our State Farm assist of the game coming from Miles Powell. Yeah, I think Miles Powell just changes this team. I think he's the best player on this team. I, I really do. I think Miles Powell, is the, Miles Powell is the best player on this team because of what he can do sharing the basketball, the way he understands the game, spaces out, comes hard off screens, and the way he shoots the ball from three. Delgado, a turnover. Baker will push it up the floor. Bounce pass ahead. Hit the finish by Omaruyi. We thought for a moment about Steve throwing Peichel. that one down. Oh, Steve Peichel getting the crowd into the game. There he is. This is where you got to you start to feel all your hard work come together. The execution's been there, defending very well. Of course you're going to want to get this crowd up into this game. Carrington from the foul line. That won't go. Baker the rebound. Three-point game, 3.15 to go. Moruyi to bounce down low to Freeman against Delgado. Delgado playing terrific defense, but a foul on the other side going against Desi Rodriguez, and Rodriguez with his fourth personal foul. It's Omaruyi again. He's kind of got the body, and I want to be careful to say this. He's not there yet, but OG Ananobi. You know, you go back to OG Ananobi in Indiana. He's got the body. He's got that activity. He's just got to continue to improve upon his game. Every time you make a comparison, someone's like, no, he's not him. I know he's not. Jeez, relax. I'll delete my tweet. <laughs> One more for Omaruyi. Coming up on BTN, our full slate of men's college basketball continues. Iowa, Ohio State, Illinois, all in action. Still to come right here on BTN, streaming live, BTN to go, and Fox Sports Go. But it, with Omaruyi on the floor, you've got an, another big defender, a guy who can cover Angel Delgado, at least give him a shot. He's athletic. He's going to run the floor. He's going to put pressure in transition. Omaruyi's got eight points, nine rebounds in this game. It's a two-point game as we come up on three minutes to go. Carrington trying to turn the corner. Delgado, the bullet underneath the Sonogo. Rodriguez on the drive, and Rodriguez lost it. It's really been the defense. I mean, their help side's in position. You got to be careful, though. This is Rodriguez is able to gather himself. That's an easy dump down for a dunk. But it just seems like this Rutgers team is dialed in. They are dialed in. They are working hard on both ends of the floor. Been more patient. Sanders from the foul line to tie it. Sanders coming up with a big bucket to close out the comeback. I've been a little critical of Corey Sanders' defense, but he has gotten it going on the offensive end. I think that's what makes him so tough. He, he can beat you on the offensive end. and The big shot he just hit. Contested jump shot coming off of a ball screen to tie things up. I mean, that's just what he can do. But if they can lock down here defensively, continue to frustrate Seton Hall, make them uncomfortable, that chance to pull this thing away. To your point about the defense, no points for Seton Hall in the last 335. They've missed their last five shots from the floor. And a 9-0 Rutgers run has tied this game up. Here's Carrington with a three. With a strong rebound tipped by Freeman and a foul. I will say two minutes and 23 seconds is a lot of time if you're going to rely on the emotions. So for Rutgers, it can't just be an emotional let's make this happen. It's got to be a go out and execute and get this win. Sanders, one for one at the line. Two free throws looking for Rutgers' first lead of the day. Down 10 at half. Down 13 midway through the first half. 
Now Rutgers up two. Harrington inside and a foul. Corey Sanders pleading his case that it wasn't a foul. Oh, look, it was almost great defense. And it's it's more of just a misfortune foul than anything else. Third foul. Sixth team foul on the Scarlet Knights. Third on Geo Baker. It just gets tripped up, but it's a foul. For them to get Desi Rodriguez in the game here with Mike Williams on him. It's an ISO down low. Harrington will back it out. Two minutes to play. Seven to shoot for Carrington. Wild shot. Freeman the ball. Oh, that was great defense. Corey Sanders locked in. Great contest. And then Freeman once again in position with a rebound. Sanders calling for the freshman Geo Baker. Wants it in his hands to run the offense. And now Sanders to work around the screen from over. Defense again. Sanders the takeaway. And Rutgers starting to feel it right now. I think Seton Hall's playing with a lot of confidence right now. And that's a testament to what Rutgers has been able to do on the defensive end. And I understand the concept of forcing the ball down low to Desi Rodriguez when you've got Mike Williams on him in the paint. But when Seton Hall's at their best, it's when they're spacing, when they're moving the basketball, knocking down threes, letting Angel Delgado do work down low. But Rutgers has just taken everything away, and they've gotten this shot right here. A ball screen, side ball screen, two dribble pull-up jumper for Corey Sanders. He made one to tie it, and then that one to extend the lead. It was 63-54. Rutgers in big trouble. And Seton Hall has not scored since. 6.06 remaining in the game when Seton Hall scored their last points. Rutgers a 13-0 run down the stretch. Well, there have been so many opportunities, but, but I think that when you have certain mismatches, you can't automatically go into it. Right? So go back to Desi Rodriguez, two plays in a row where the offense gets stagnant because you're trying to force the ball down low. I, I get the concept of it, but it takes you out of rhythm. It takes you away from doing what makes you best. Drake and Iowa coming up after this one is over. Game two of our quadruple header on BTN, and what a start yeah. to the day on BTN. Good luck to the remaining three yeah, games yeah, to match this. this one. Yeah, top this. I, I just hope, look, I, I hope that the Rutgers fan base sees what's brewing here in this category. I hope you understand what's coming. Steve Peichel's done a fantastic job with this program, and when the environment is like this, this team's going to win a lot of games. It's a hard place to play. Yeah. If you can get this crowd consistently into it. Ten to shoot, one minute to go. Baker to work. Here's Williams for a three. Would have been maybe a dagger. Powell on the quick attack, and Powell is fouled. No basket. It's a good foul. Now Kevin Willard wants the intentional. I would argue that 50% of fouls are intentional. <laughs> you know, if I get beat and I'm going to go up and try to you intend take to a foul. shot, I intend to foul this guy. Now he does. No intent to hurt, but... There's a difference between intending to foul and intending to hurt four yeah. on Geo Baker. That's what I'm saying. I get the intentional foul. You could probably call it 50% of the time. Miles Powell at the line for the first time today. He's 15 for 18 on the year. More to come for the sophomore from Trenton. 
Rutgers, this is an execute. This is execution time. This is take your time. Trust what Geo Baker's been able to do, getting into the paint, making good decisions. Two point game. 50.7 seconds to go. Sanders. Taking a little time here. 35 seconds to play. It's kind of a bit of a matchup zone here from Seton Hall. 10 to shoot. Sanders has got to go. Seven on the shot clock. Omaruyi. Omaruyi on the drive. The wraparound pass. Freeman is fouled with one to shoot. I tell you, I, I've been so impressed with Omaruyi. I mean, just look at the future of this program. The, the players that are... The players that are being developed, they're becoming much better basketball players the more time they spend here. And the type of guys that Steve Peichel's going to get are, are guys that need to improve. I have a chip on their shoulder. Look at Geo Baker. I got something to prove. They've all contributed. These are big foul shots. What's more impressive about what we've seen from Omaruyi today, this is a kid who didn't start playing basketball until the 10th grade. That is only young in his basketball career, but Omaruyi, eight points, nine rebounds, and a huge impact on this game as Seton Hall uses the timeout. And it's impressive when you think about where he's going to be after being developed, after getting more work. One time on the floor. I mean, I would say that a lot of the kids today are as good as they are because of the amount of time they play. We can criticize AU, and yes, it is a mess, especially with young kids. The fact that young little... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds are playing AU basketball. It's crazy. But the specialization does bring out certain skills. So to see where a guy like Eugene Omari Omari is going to be in another year or two with some development, kind of picking up some more time on the floor, be impressive. We were talking with Steve Peichel earlier today, and he said, you know, this trophy is a great thing. We want to bring this trophy back, but it's, it doesn't really become a rivalry until we can beat each other in this rivalry. So they're 20.7 seconds away from this becoming a real rivalry yeah, again. It's a really interesting thing for him to say. Uh, and, and that's just being realistic. That's also him being realistic of where his program's at. Say, look, we're close, but we're not going to really be a contender. It's also saying the same thing in the, in, in the Big Ten really going to be a contender or even a competitor until we're able to win games. And I think that's where this team is. They're close, but until you're able to get them to win some games, you're not yet going to be taking that seriously. Don't forget Drake and Iowa coming up next. We'll get you there just as soon as this one is over. But this has been a day in the want it to end. One more for Freeman to try to make it a two-possession game. <laughs> Three-point game, Seton Hall with the ball. Kadeem Carrington, the three for Powell. Halfway down, it won't go. Rebound by Williams and a foul. Kevin, you talk about halfway down. That, that shot was all but in. And Mike Williams, how about the, the little guy on the floor? Just always oh, seems to be a great rebound, great guard rebounder. Boy. And that thing was all but in. 7.7 7 seconds. Big foul shots. Still a one possession game. One more free throw. Williams saying, just calm down. Williams, the senior, been on the losing end time and time again. His high school teammate, Kadeem Carrington, has had bragging rights. May not have him today. 7.7 7 seconds to go on a Rutgers timeout. Some Rutgers student who actually threw a shirt on the floor. That's the last thing you need right now. I mean, when you got Corey Sanders going on there and saying, calm down, then you know you need to calm <laughs> yeah, you've down. You've gone over the top. You've been hyping him up the whole day. I mean, you can't say enough about the effort from this Rutgers team. And the effort is not just what you're seeing on the floor. 
And that's something of note. I mean, all five, or all, uh, excuse me, zero field goals in the last 5.58. I, clearly, that's how you know I'm reading something. I can't read. <laughs> but the effort is is what's going on behind the scenes in practice in terms of managing some of the personalities in this coaching staff. That's what brings itself to this environment. Drake and Iowa coming up next. 7.7 seconds to go. Rodriguez and a timeout taken by Miles Kale. Advance it to half court. Quick timeout used, their final timeout. Kevin Willard will draw something up. She like the NBA rule there. Just call time. We got timeout. Just let him advance. Yeah, like you and I will disagree on that. I like that NBA rule because I'm so offensive. Working. I know, that's why. Give these guys another chance to score. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin, I want to go back to it, man. Like, I've done some games here. You've done some games here where a few years back, it, it was sparse at best. There was no excitement. There was no passion in this program. And what you're seeing today is something that you can recruit to. You can certainly recruit to this. You've got new facilities coming. You've got a coach and a coaching staff who are investing in their team. And I, I hope this Rutgers fan base puts their investment in as well. Tenths of a second onto the clock. 7.2 on the clock. Now, what you don't want is a quick, easy one. Uh, you don't want to give a quick, easy one. Too quick. A lob to the rim. You've got to pressure. Corey Sanders on the ball. Carrington inbounding. Carrington the trigger intercepted. Omoruyi with the steal. And a foul. And that one is going to be a flagrant. Miles Powell called for the foul as Rutgers may be able to close out the biggest win in Steve Peichel's brief tenure as head coach. This has gotten really, really, I mean, if this wasn't intense already, I mean, look, Omarui loses the ball a little bit, actually gave Miles Powell an opportunity, and, and that's just a little excessive. I would say a play on the ball is okay there. It, it's the arm coming down. It's the, the hard hammer. Illegal, non-excessive contact with an opponent above the shoulder. Thank you, Webster. It's the technical flagrant one <laughs> verbiage. And that was a pretty clear cut flagrant one. No look at it just to make sure there was nothing more there. But Corey Sanders and Mike Williams are starting to get this crowd rolling. Understandably so. I mean, this is a team that you said, we've said has been so close. They've been there. They've been there. They've been so close. And now they have an opportunity here. I mean, I, I would say 3.7 seconds left. They're going to close this thing out. These are the steps that you need to take as a program, too. I mean, statement games, top 25 games, and I have no idea what we're still talking about right now. <laughs> this one... Seems pretty cut Don't and dry. Don't they know we've got Iowa and Drake coming <laughs> on next? Jeez, all my God. Oh, well, you going to the line. <laughs> it's been a big concern, I know, of everyone in this building. Drake, Iowa. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows. Not in this building. And the possession for one. Two shots and the ball. And Omoruyi can really just close this thing out. <laughs> Oh, he's been good today, John. Nine points, nine rebounds, 20 minutes, yeah. no turnovers. He's had his hands on the ball. Yeah, activity, he's around the ball, he's attacking the offensive glass. The tip jam was it. The tip jam was it. That got this crowd into it. A missed three, Mike Williams, a wide open three opportunity miss. Tip jam really got this crowd into it. Seton Hall is going to close this game if they don't score without a bucket in six minutes and five seconds, and they're not gonna score. And Rutgers pulls the Giant upset at home. <laughs> and Deshaun Freeman just threw the ball up into the stands. Hopefully that fan gets to keep it, Kevin. Seton Hall's 13-point lead gone. Rutgers wins it.
Their first win against a ranked opponent since January of 2015 when they knocked off Wisconsin. Huge win for Steve Peichel and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Drake and Iowa coming up next. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network. For John Crispin, I'm Kevin Kugler saying so long from a very happy Piscataway. Now let's head to Des Moines and join Wayne Randazzo and Sean Morris.